the Bills just won, baby, against the Giants. Now, it's kind of late. I got to be a little quiet, but y'all want to get this video out to you. I got a dope tutorial ready for you. First off, what on earth is this world coming to when you try to give away a Bronze Series 9 and the winner doesn't claim the machine? Which is why I'm going to have to give it away again. So if I were you, I would stick around till the end of this video till you hear the details so you got a chance to win it. When the Bills win, I'm pretty hyped today. And, um, you know, like I said, man, life is crazy, man. I've been doing CrossFit, getting crazy, drinking White Claws. Ain't no law. Today we're going to do a drop fade. Let me just get comfortable. All right. As you notice, it's kind of dark. It's kind of late, but I got to get this out to you guys. I'm going to work my way through the process. I'm going to try my best to explain exactly what I'm up to. And hopefully you guys can understand it. And hopefully this helps you or somebody out there to learn how to do this type of haircut. Now a quick disclaimer. This kid's got a mop. Let's go. So here it is. Long hair. This kid was actually running from Hurricane Dorian. He was on the other side of the coast. Came over here to take refuge for a few days. And he found himself with a whole new look. And he was really happy. It was really a joy to have this person in my chair. And I, I got great joy out of taking time with him and, and just really trying to knock this one out of the park. So to start with, we got to remove this bulk. So I tell you guys time and time again, you're going to need a machine that can do this. Now this machine I am using is the Oster Octane with the detachable number two. And it can plow through all that bulk quite easily. I'm also using that comb technique where I'm coming down with it. My whole idea here is I really don't want to take it too high above the periodal ridge. That'll be the next thing that I'm going to address. And I don't want to make sure, I just want to make sure I don't cut into that too high. I want to leave myself some room to blend. And I need to leave myself some bulk because that's exactly what's going to make this haircut pop. Let's keep it going. All right, I'm rolling the comb out towards me and I'm just cutting off a little bit. Now, pay attention, you guys. This is just a debulking technique. So a lot of you guys are running into trouble because you're trying to do everything with your clipper over comb. Now, in some cases, you can accomplish a lot with clipper over comb. But in many cases, you're, you're just trying to reduce the bulk and especially be careful with them bangs because I got a whole plan for the top of his hair and it could go right down the drain if I accidentally cut his bangs. So I just want to leave his bangs kind of long, leave it out of this. It's got nothing to do with what we're trying to do right now. So we're going to get rid of that and we're going to take care of this right side as well. We want to get it fairly close. See, a lot of you guys have asked me for doing tutorials. Can you just do like a two on the back and sides with some scissors on top? And, and absolutely, that, that number two on the back and sides with scissors on top would look very similar to where we're going with this haircut now, except for this is a barber channel. And of course, we're going to take it to the next level. We need to take them down to skin to show that nice blend off because that's what we do. So I'm going to jump down the skin. I'm trying to keep it fairly low. I want to keep my skin line. I have a 5-0 on my Oster Octane detachable and I'm going to quickly remove all the rest of this bulk and that's going to get me very close to the skin level which is nice because when I go into my next step with the Braun Series 9 that I've been trying to give away and I can't find anybody who wants it. Now I'm just playing. I know one of you guys really want it and I know one of you guys is going to win it. But I'm going to use the machine that makes sense around the ears. Maybe I, let, I missed a couple hairs. I want to go back to a trimmer and, and just use the machine that makes sense for the right place. Now, if you're using a big old bulky detachable, maybe it doesn't work for getting behind the ears as well. Grab your trimmers. But for the, ma for the massive, large portions that we want to just take out bulk, yeah, we need that thing. So let's go through with the Braun Series 9. As you notice, as I get close to where I made that 5-0 line, I'm going to start flipping up, reducing tension, and moving away. I also might come down with the grain, but whatever technique you choose to use, whether it's um, peppering or kind of tapping it or just lightly moving your hand away, just this is going to save you time. This is that one tip that's really going to save you time. And what that tip is, is to just make sure that this is perfect make sure that you're not going to have to go through and do additional work with your trimmer or go back to a previous step by just being careful here so if you've done this correctly what you will see is a perfectly smooth blend from where the skin started to where the 5-0 line is and that's pretty much that so towards the bottom push as hard as you want remove as much as you want and you'll be in good shape before you know it now i'm going to wet the top of his hair 
with my automatic spray bottle plus I put the links in the description to everything that I'm using so if you guys are ever curious just click that little drop down and you guys can see all the links but I'm just gonna wet his hair so that I can get it back and out of my way and that way I don't accidentally cut it because like I said I had kind of a vision going for what I was gonna do on the top so I'm gonna just clip this top piece off and I'm gonna go back to the work on the sides now what I really want to see is a nice smooth transition from where I did that too into that top area so this is a perfect time to go back through and refine it with some scissor over comb or possibly some thinning shear over comb and just get that blend to look as smooth as possible so that the really the, the main thing I got to do left is I just got to attack that skin line which I will show you how I'm going to do that in, in just a few minutes but before I attack that skin line I'm trying to keep as much bulk as I can above the parietal ridge so that this way this blend can really pop and it can really show a difference because this hair is blonde and a lot of you guys might say oh god you know blonde hair is really easy to blend well that is true some blonde hair can be easy to blend but it can be very difficult to create this look even with blonde hair to the point where I would feel comfortable showing you guys on my YouTube channel and letting you just pick me apart so I really want to keep that thing dark towards the parietal ridge now we're using the Oster Fast Feeds, you know, the Beast, one of my favorite clippers to use. And I'm going to open the number one guard and I'm going to begin to kind of scoop out in a way. Now, I told you guys many times throughout all my tutorials that this technique is not necessary. You do not need to scoop out. However, in this particular case, being that this haircut is a little more difficult than some of the other ones I have featured, I am going to do some flicking out because I want to try to keep that blend as smooth as possible, I'm trying to keep it as steep as I can, which is why I'm starting with the number one and I'm not just attacking with the open taper like I normally do. So just using the corners, kind of working my way in and scooping out gently. I'm not going to really create too much of an issue. I'm not lying because of these bills, I was so hyped. I was throwing my son around and I almost threw him through the fucking ceiling. Swear. I'm always going to keep in mind that I can go back to my thinning shears and I can fix that but as long as I have hair there so I don't want to take it too short. I've just switched to my half guard and I began with it open and slightly I'm closing it as I move down slightly little by little each time that I move down I close it up a little bit keeping it kind of on an angle using that crisscross method that I've talked about in other videos until I get down to my open taper portion. Now the one thing that I don't know if I've covered clearly but when I take my open taper, when I'm in this position, right, I, I want to just be touching kind of one corner and I'm kind of keeping it on an angle. One corner and I'm sort of keeping it on an angle. And I'm moving it back and forth in this crisscross motion. Now the reason why I'm only using one corner and I'm keeping it on that angle is because any mistake that I make right now doing this is going to be significantly reduced. It's not going to be a big deal to fix any little mistake you make like this. However, if you lay that entire blade flat on there and you go straight into it and let's say you create a big line that's an inch and a half long, well, now it's going to be a lot harder to mask that. So we really don't want to we don't want to risk that. So I just keep it on that corner and I move my way through just like that, and that's what helps me to not make so many mistakes. Now, in this particular cut, it's not going to be uncommon that you might have to go back to the previous step so that you know exactly where you were meeting. So it might be that you have to go back to the one. It might be that you have to go back to the zero. Now, you're going to see me kind of chase my tail around in here a little bit, but really I'm not chasing my tail. I'm actually kind of being really careful. If I look at something and I'm like, hey, I think the half guard could take that out. Well, it might be smart to grab the one and open the one and say, okay, yeah, I was right. Now I'll go back to the half guard because if it turns out that you were wrong, you grab the half guard, you went in there and you created a line. And uh, now as one of my subscribers recently said, he's looking like the monk, the young monk from the fifth element, whatever that means, but it sounded funny. So anyways, keeping, keeping on with the same strategy here, same movements, still scooping away, keeping that crisscross motion and especially when I'm working in them, them low areas around the skin I'm keeping that just one corner of the blade down and I'm moving back and forth now this is actually using a little bit of freehand texturizing shears uh, if you're using a taper comb the end of the taper comb it gets very very fine and you're able to make really small adjustments which is why I love using taper comb so much during this process 
However, there could be a time where you might want to use your texturizing shear even closer so you can put it right up against the scalp. Now if you do put it right up against the scalp, you really want to make sure that you're tipping it out sort of on an angle and you're just using a little bit of that blade um, because you don't want to cut them so short that it turns into a complete bald notch and you're not going to be able to fix that. You're not going to be able to get that out. So whatever you choose to do with your texturizing shears, just make sure that you go in there, conservatively take a little bit. If you're still seeing that dark area, generally it's behind the ears, in the hollows of the head. That's where you're gonna struggle a little bit. You're gonna see that dark area because even though we might follow our technique to a T, the hair in the head is always gonna present certain challenges. So the hair is always gonna be growing maybe back or maybe down or maybe forward. So that's gonna cause different different ways of, of looking at it that's going to cause shadows to occur in certain situations and you know you're just going to have to deal with each person that's why you can't just say like this is a one size fits all thing because it's really not it's one of those things where like this is going to look really really good on some people and you know some people this might not be the proper haircut for them now it's up to you as a professional to help them help them to figure out what it is but at this point, you can kind of see that I'm, I'm beginning to close my lever, I'm moving it down, I'm keeping it on the angle, and I think I've really illustrated it better in this view what I'm really doing. I move my camera around just right so that you guys can see it, and I'm just kind of bouncing into that line, flipping out just a little bit, and little by little, you're starting to see that line dissipate, and I'm being really careful not to push this too high and not to make a mistake. And especially for you guys, man, when you guys are at this point, of the haircut be careful because you're on the home stretch here and the last thing that you want to do is create an issue that you can't fix after you're this far in and you know we, we don't want to have that we don't want to have that problem so especially if you're looking to get that rock solid Instagram photo or that thing that you're gonna advertise with moving into the future I mean you guys gotta think past just this this haircut stuff um, just this present haircut that you're going to make let's say twenty one dollars or whatever you're going to make off of this cut it's actually more than that you guys got to realize that you are going to use this to advertise that's going to help you find new clients and that's going to probably that's probably going to lead to finding more um making more money so it's it's not just about this one haircut it's about your reputation and it's about having that ability to to advertise and to use it to leverage and to build your chair because let's face it Everybody needs to build their chair if you want to make it in barbering because I think the statistics are like pretty high for the people who go to school and find themselves not actually doing this for a living and it actually breaks my heart that they didn't stick with it long enough to to actually find um, to, to find that security to find them clients and to grow their business to where they could have been happy and probably successful and I'm sure that many of them probably have given up and have went back to those jobs that have kept them safe and secure for so long but like you know if this is your dream man you guys need to go out there and chase it don't be afraid of it go get it and get it done and and don't quit because if you just put in the work this business will take care of you tenfold it comes around trust me so if you're out there doing things that you don't feel like doing like passing out cards because it's uncomfortable or you're making constant instagram posts or you feel like you're sacrificing all these things well that's good because that's what you need to do you need to sacrifice in order to gain in order to grow so now that i'm done with my rant let's get back to this cut because i'm just about done with the blend as you can see i've done the exact same thing on the back of the head as i did on the right and the left side of the head and for anybody who might ask down in the comments no this is not actually how i cut hair generally i cut hair all the way around the head in in each step i don't really work on one side finish it completely jump to the other side i, I think that that is a way to to waste time and you know i'm not really into wasting time i actually despise wasting time any downtime that i get i try to make the most of it so either i'm cutting hair i'm editing or i'm working on something so we're just going to go back through with the texturizing shears and i'm going to finish that out and you guys are going to see i'm going to cut the top i'm going to talk about it because of course my camera angle was like off a little bit and i'm not going to be able to show you the actual scissor snips of the top but don't worry i'm going to explain that to you so that maybe we can make some sense out of this so i'm beginning in the center with the mohawk guideline and i'm actually slightly over directing the hair from the front um backwards 
in order to create an increase in length in the front. Now you're gonna see that I divided out the front and I've kept it away. So now I have my guide directly in the center, which is a little bit shorter, and I'm working slightly off the edge, and I'm actually just going to work back in small little panels that are like this. So I'm jumping off the side of my guide, off the side of my guide, off the side of my guide, off the side of my guide. And I'm gonna keep working in, in some of these hair, um, some of these you'll, you'll be able to actually see it. And yeah, I, like I said, the camera angle wasn't great, but you can kind of get an idea of what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. And quickly, I just wanna give a shout out to Shear Police because they gave me these shears at the show and I really do like them. So if you guys wanna check out the shears that I'm using, I am not affiliated with them in any way, shape or form. I just think they make a great product and that's shearpolice.com. They got what it takes, that's what he said. So. Anyways, yeah, sheerpolice.com. Them dudes are, are great. Next, there is something I've been wanting to talk about on the channel, and I've been thinking about it, and I want to bring it up. It's actually about putting your skin line in. What is the best way to put in your skin line? Should you be putting it in the harsh skin line? Should you be down fading? Should you be putting it in with a 3-0? That's the next video. I'm going to be talking all about that, and it's also going to help you to save time. And before I stop talking about this tutorial altogether I just want to show you guys something quick with this blow dry because it's actually pretty simple it's a simple technique but I don't know if if many of you guys know this but I just put a little bit of gel in his hair now I'm blow drying it backwards I want to keep the hot I want to keep it as hot as possible I want to get that hair cooking and I want to make sure it's 100% dry so before you touch that cool button before you touch that cool button it's got to be 100% dry so when you think it's dry it probably isn't and then when you think it's dry, it's probably still not dry. But once it's 100% dry, you go ahead and hit that cool button. That'll lock it in place. And that'll pretty much get you pretty close to the style you want. And then I chose to use a little bit of Slick Gorilla with the slow-mo because I thought it looked cool. And yeah, that's that's how I wound up getting this, this final look. That's how I achieved it. Now, on to more important things. The channel and we want to give away this Braun Series 9. I want to give away the Braun Series 9. So, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna leave a random comment on this video. Now, I have a quick disclaimer because the last video had like 1,600 comments and there was only like 200 likes. Now, I'm just gonna ask you guys, if you wanna win it, please just give me a little thumbs up and write the comment. It really helps me out when you guys give me those thumbs up. It allows my video to be seen in more areas and it allows YouTube to, to help share my channel with others who might need it so I will be grateful for you guys to hit that thumbs up leave a comment I'm gonna use a random comment picker we're gonna let this run for two weeks and there is another change you only got three days to claim it because I'm tired of waiting okay so whoever wins it you got three days to claim it I'm gonna run the random comment picker somebody who watched this video and left a comment is gonna win this bronze series 9 and don't bother leaving more than one comment because before I said you can leave as many as you want and I think that got out of hand okay don't bother leaving more than one comment because the random comment picker it filters that out so just go ahead and leave one comment and best of luck to you I really hope that you guys can win and if you don't win just click subscribe because I'm giving stuff away all the time on this channel I'm missing something I know I'm missing something all right, you guys, I just want to wish you luck to whoever wins it. Thank you guys so much for stopping in and checking out my channel. Click subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that thumbs up and give me a little bit of help. Drop a random comment. The random comment picker will be looking for you, and somebody is going to win that Braun Series 9. I'll see you guys in my next video. I'm out of here.